this very special time of the year. We have two very special trees that we're going to be lighting here in this one special town tonight. And right now, I would like to ask Reverend Clay Austin to come forward and start the evening's program off with our invocation. Let us pray. God, we give thanks that in this occasion we can gather together as fellow citizens, as believers, as those who care for one another and care about the causes that bring us together. We give thanks that you are in our midst. We ask the blessing of your presence. Watch over us this evening and watch over this country in this very important time. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. To start off with just a couple of announcements. If you had placed a ornament on the victim's wreath before, they had those ornaments at a very special table right over here. We encourage you to step over there and pick those up. And also, we want to thank the Blountville Ruritan for providing the victim's remembrance tree for this evening. And right now, I'd like to welcome Sullivan County Mayor Richard Venable to the podium for a few words of welcome. Thank you, Chris. It's my high honor, quite honestly, and pleasure to welcome you here tonight on behalf of the people of Sullivan County. I know you're all probably Sullivan Countyans. And this is one of the greatest turnouts we've had, and we appreciate your being here. Uh, I'll take very little time in saying that we've, we've got a great program for you tonight. We've uh, ordered good weather for you tonight, and we've got a lot of good things uh, that will happen shortly. So. Right now, uh, we're going to get to one of the main events of the night, and I'm going to ask Senator John Lombard, who you will hear from later, to join me uh, as we light the Christmas tree, the Sullivan County Christmas tree, and continue on the tradition. Uh, probably a 240-year tradition, because that's how old our county is this year. So, Senator Lombard, if you'll... Uh, you going to count down? I'm, go I'm going to count down. He's got his hand on the switch. So we'll count down from five. If you want to join me, please do. Five, four, three, two, one. And, and, and I would like to say before I go that I would uh, I certainly appreciate to want to recognize the Cindy Stewart and the, uh, the count employees of the county uh, buildings department who put up these lights and they've worked on them uh, for a week and, uh, and uh, as we go down the courthouse they're beautiful lights so again thank you for coming welcome and I think at this point I'll turn it over to Darren uh, Malcolm and the choir
here from the Blackwell Middle School Choir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now I would like to introduce State Senator John Lundberg to step up to the podium for a very special Christmas address. Thank you, Chris. Um, when I was asked to speak, it was an honor to get that call. But it's frankly one that I have been concerned about because part of me says, how do you talk about something so joyous and wonderful? At the same time, we're talking about victims and remembering. So I thought about a couple of things that I think are important to me. And I'm going to ask, first off, would everyone take a couple of steps forward? And I'm going to make this semi-interactive, if you will. Sometimes I'm unorthodox. And I'm going to ask for your help. If all of you would look to the person next to you and grab their hand across the board, everyone, including in the choir. And this is not a sad time. This is a joyous time. You've gone through the sorrows. You know those. But for the victims and whose tree this emphasizes tonight, I want you to know that we are all part of your family. We celebrate the season of birth of someone who brought the Holy Spirit into all of us and made us all part of one singular family. And we are all part of your family. There was a verse that hit me, 2 Corinthians. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day to day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is is eternal. So for those of you who are here who are remembering, uh, know that we all remember with you and we are all part of a greater family and the bond is very secure. Thank you and Merry Christmas. And right now, a very special arrangement of the song Silent Night by Assistant District Attorney Emily Hutchins on violin and Carolyn Berry on flute. to the podium, a lady that uh, I've had, I've known for several years now, and uh, her name is Joan Berry, and she is with the Hope for Victims Advocacy Group, and Joan, if you would come on up and say a few words for us, she's going to be lighting the Victims Remembrance Tree.
first I would like to thank you all for uh, allowing us to be part of this celebration at Christmas time and letting us be here to remember our loved ones. Um, Christmas is a special time, so it makes it very hard for family members that have lost a loved one. But we rejoice in the fact that we've had them and we'd rather have them for the time that we, they were with us than never had them at all. And I just want you to know that the, the power of prayer has meant so much to all of, all of us in this time of year. So I, I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and enjoy your loved ones. Have a, have a wonderful Christmas and be thankful for everything that we have. And let's remember the, the reason for Christmas. Thank you. And now Joan will light the victim's remembrance tree. Purple is in remembrance of those victims. And right now, uh, I'd like to in invite District Attorney General Barry Stavis up to the podium for just a few words. I would like to thank everyone that's been a part of this, that's made this such a special moment uh, for the lighting of both trees, but particularly for me, the victim tree. And I, I really appreciate the families that have lost loved ones so senselessly here in Sullivan County that have come out on a cold night to remember them and to honor them and to love them and, and we are a community here tonight and that means that together we can remember those that we know and those who even that we don't know that we can hold together and remember also those times that we had before they left that we had together and, and in this season we can have the confidence that we'll see them again and so I'm so glad to be here tonight to, to witness the families as they honor their loved ones by putting the ornaments on the wreath. So thank you for coming out, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you, General Stavis. Now we're coming to the part where uh, if you have an ornament that you would like to place on the victim's remembrance wreath up here, we would encourage you to come forward at this time to do that. And if you would like to say the person that you're remembering, if you would like to come up here and, and form a line right here, come around here and just say their name before you put the, the ornament on the wreath, or if you just want to put the wreath on, uh, the ornament on the wreath, we, we're going to do that right now. If you would, start coming forward. daughter, Margaret Cheyenne Buck. This is for Sergeant Steve Hinkle, Sullivan County Sheriff's Office, end of watch, February 26, 2019. And also I have another one for all officers lost in line of duty in the year 2019. Officer Mark Vance, Bristol, Tennessee. Miss Missy. This is for my son, Joshua Daniel Moyers. For my father, Barry Myers. Jennifer Rooney. For my daughter, Melissa Mingle, and his mother. 
that would like to come forward and feel free to come forward at this time. We'll take a few moments so they place the place the ornaments on the wreath. Our ceremony here this evening this wreath will be placed at the Sullivan County Justice Center well it will remain there until January
And now, once again, let's hear it from the Bluntville Middle School Choir under the direction of Darren Malcolm. London Goodson will be singing our solo on Believe from the Polar Express.
Let's hear it once again for the Bluntville Middle School Choir. It's so beautiful with those voices up in song. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I want to ask Reverend Clay Austin, pastor at First Baptist Church here in Bluntville, to come forward once again for a closing word of prayer. And as we pray, we're reminded that the world is a broken place, but God had a word for people who live in a broken place as we pray. God, we give thanks that your word says that you loved us and this world so much that you sent your son for all who are lonely, for all who are living in the midst of broken hearts and lives. And we pray for our friends who tonight have stepped up to say a name, a name that to some of us is a name but to this person, it was a precious relationship that has been broken. Encourage and bless and keep and guide and restore them is our prayer. And because you have come to this world, let the peace that comes from knowing Christ reign in our hearts and our lives. And let the peace of Christ reign in this world. And let us be influences for the good. Let us encourage those who need encouraging and help those who need helping. And may we do it in the wonderful name of Christ. In that name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone, that concludes tonight's program. I just want to say one thing. Merry Christmas, everyone, and have a happy New Year as well. And thank you so much for being here tonight. We really appreciate you. Thank you, and Merry Christmas.